More than 90% of young men report watching prawn videos with some regularity. Let's suppose you belong to that 10% of men who have overcome this addiction. What does that say about you? The answer is that it brings you a great deal closer to freedom. This freedom represents discipline, self-mastery, and the ability to say no to something that 90% of men struggle with daily. However, like everything, success has a dark side. And just because you ain't wanking it like a loser anymore, doesn't mean you're special or a diamond in the rough. In fact, I would hope you have better things to do with your life instead of jacking off all day. In this video, I want to talk about three ideas on why dudes need to stop obsessing over nofap and start living life. Because life doesn't care if you're on day one million without busting nuts or zero. Principle one, stop counting the days and make the days count. One of my pet peeves about the nofap community is that one of the worst habits that even I used to have was not leaving the house or participating with the world around you until you were on a specific day count, which implies that your entire identity and self-worth is equated to how many days you can go without busting nuts. What? Bro, what are you talking about, man? And when you think about it, this is absolutely ridiculous. Those two things shouldn't coincide and affect the way that you move in this world. What you'll come to find is that the road to overcoming any addiction is a lifestyle, a commitment to a new life through the act of saying no to who you used to be and how that's enough. Meaning that even if you do relapse or fuck up along the way, that doesn't mean that you should hide away from the world. If you relapse, that isn't to say that you're a failure or not good enough to put yourself out there again because what's the point of being on day 1 million of nofap if you don't ever do anything with the energy that you're building essentially that's all nofap is in a nutshell it's storing potent energy but doing nothing with it that is as good as useless stop counting the days and start making the days count principle two relapses are part of the journey one of the best things you could ever do for yourself in the pursuit of becoming a better man is to ask yourself in times of your losses and setbacks what if this is a gift the the reality is it's very common to experience deep feelings of shame and guilt when you decide to give in to the temptations of what you know is no longer serving you. But the truth is these moments define you and help you learn more about yourself and who you are. Studies have found that most people who decide to end addiction have at least one lapse or relapse during recovery. Relapse is most likely in the first 90 days after embarking on recovery. It can be challenging to break free when trying to change a behavior or habit you've had for a long time time. However, if you relapse, it can be a sign that you've made progress. It means that you've been able to resist the behavior or habits for a certain period of time, and that's a step in the right direction. So don't be too hard on yourself if you do experience a relapse. I wish I would have done this a long time ago, but one of the best practices that you can have when you relapse or have any sort of setback in your life is treating yourself at your lowest points, how you would treat a best friend with compassion, empathy, and forgiveness. The sooner you can learn to forgive yourself for your your mistakes, the quicker you'll get back to living out your divine purpose. I'm not perfect, baby. I'm just like you. You, you feel me? I'm, I'm not perfect, bro. Principle three, a man who cannot restrain himself from sexual pleasures is easily manipulated. If every man on this planet had absolute power and control over the sexual energy, what would our society look like? Prawn websites would lose millions overnight, strip clubs worldwide would shut down, and OnlyFans girls would probably riot. The reality is, I don't think it'll ever be possible. If we look at the history of mankind, there have always been pimps, tricks, and simps. The origins of the pimp and trick culture can be traced back to ancient times when prostitution was a common practice in many societies. In ancient Greece, for example, prostitution was legal and pimps were known to manage brothels and prostitutes. In the 20th century, the pimp and trick culture became more visible in popular culture with movies, music, and other forms of entertainment. However, the reality of the industry and the pimp and trick culture continues to thrive in many parts of the world and the exploitation of women in the sex industry remains a pressing social issue. I say all of this as a means to remind you that when you decide to become a part of that 10% of men who refuse to watch porn and jack off, the act itself is noble. But obsessing over your nofap streak is indicative to something else. And that is that many men have taken this higher road to obtain deeper truths about themselves only to find nothing. Your nofap journey 
journey makes you realize that the reward isn't in how many days you can go without busting nuts, but in what you do with the power and energy it brings. In other words, you can be on day 9 million on NoFap, but if you decide to be a hermit all your life and never take risks, does it really matter? If you're on this journey like I am, I genuinely wish you the best. I hope that I have changed your perspective on this lifestyle or at least have made you realize how far you have come. If you are still trying to overcome this addiction, I have been sober of this for six years and I know the pursuit is not an easy one. And at the time of this recording, I am creating a book designed to help you quit prawn for the rest of your life. If that is something that is interesting to you, consider looking at the links in the description below and I'll see you in the next one.